Oh man, I had so many tabs open, I had to close Firefox. <laughs> uh, it's hard to make these videos, I can't even tell you. I got uh, so much information out there. there. That's why you'll see crap loads of links down there. So if I don't cover everything in this video, even though it goes long, then I'm going to try and keep it short and just cut myself off when we get to like 10 minutes or so. And then I'll wind up being 15 minutes long because I after I say I'm going to stop, I go for five more minutes. But enough of that. Okay. Uh, NSA spying, price of silver, uh, and a few other things are the topic of this video. But the main thing, of course, is the NSA spying, which they told you nobody cared about. They tried to tell you nobody cares. That we're all just happy sheep, and, and we want to be protected by the government. Turns out a lot of people care, and it's, it's quite a hullabaloo internationally and in this country. And the whole thing with Snowden... I had a, I, why Tice and all these other guys, tons of other whistleblowers, well not tons, but a few other whistleblowers have come out and been a little more accurate and a lot more information, and yet somehow Snowden is the one that cracks through in their time. But notice how the, uh, the uh, mainstream media keeps the focus on Snowden, right? Look at Snowden, look at the kill the messenger, look at the messenger, do it. Not the fact the prism, spine, unconstitutionality, the concept of American, un-American. There's no un-Mexican or un-Canadian or un-Chinese or un-Russian, right? or un-African, uh, there's, 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 or un-Australian, but there is a definite concept, a definite construct in the American people's mind of how things are supposed to be. We are idealistic. We are idealistic people, and we have this thing about what it is to be American and freedom and liberty and home of the brave and land of the free and all this other nonsense, home of the slave and home of the fee, um, or land of the slave and home of the fee. Anyhow, the idea being that the, the 1984, all they got wrong was the date because everything, it's just amazing. People don't understand the depth of depravity that <laughs> is going on here. And they, and so this guy exposes it, um, or exposes some, and then people start to tickle and go, Hey, wait a minute. Now, the whole concept of, I've got nothing to fear so um, because I've got nothing to hide, or you've got nothing to fear if you don't have anything to hide, is ridiculous. It's not about that. And I know people are so paranoid, they're worried about you know me getting taken away when I don't make a video for a while. They, it's like, they, they, don't care, they don't give a fuck about me and you. Let me make that clear. You narcissistic assholes. There is no, it has nothing to do with, with uh, you know, oh, they're not coming for you. They're not coming for you, 100 Monkey. Don't worry about it. They ain't coming for you. I know they're not coming for me. It's not about me. It's not about me and you. It is about me and you, but it's not about me and you. It's about the government. The 300 million, that's a good cover for right, being able to just cover everything and use the metadata and so forth, but it's about Supreme Court justices and presidents and congressmen, senators. And at the state level, and anybody that could damage their monopolies, being able to spy on them, being able to blackmail them, now showing that the people that they got dirt on get to the front of the list or get, you know, get, get pushed ahead on, uh, when it comes to, like, say, federal judges. Obama was being spied on in 2004, and suddenly he's president. Oh, you think they got some stuff on Obama? What do you think? You think they got a, a little bit on Obama, maybe? There's all kind of, I mean, I know f firsthand because he came from Hawaii, people that went to Punahou with Obama and, you know, sexual preference <laughs> is still a big issue here, right? Stuff that for you and me doesn't make a difference. Somebody can call me gay, I don't give a damn, right? I'm not, I don't care. Even if I was, I wouldn't care. Somebody can, right? That, but when you're in office and you're making laws and you're, oh, those naughty homosexuals, and then somebody shows that you're gay, oh, that can destroy your career and ruin your power, and now you might have to get out and get a real job, and it's going to be hard to get a real job when you get fired in disgrace. But the idea is, they, they use stuff that maybe you and I wouldn't give a rip about, but it's important to them. How about Spitzer, right? He's cheating on his wife with the 18... He's, right? Would have been cheap... Anyway, there is a great article. It was very sexist, but it would have been... I mean, you know, what did the guy say? You don't pay hookers... To have sex with you, you pay hookers to leave after you have sex with them. But the idea is that, you know, that, that he was coming out against the Fed and doing some investment. Ooh, suddenly they've got all this information on him. They're la laundering billions of dollars and they can't figure out anything. Right? We've got hundreds, we've got tons and tons of drugs coming in the United States. They don't know where it's coming from. We got all the surveillance. We got satellites that can spot, you know, certainly a plane from outer space. But I mean, license plates, and they can't stop the inflow of drugs. And they, and then you see the Ben Swan thing down there, where he's talking about, yeah, they, of course, the United States government is involved, and of course, 
they any competition that they have, guys that aren't on the take and aren't laundering money with them and laundering money through their banks, they push them guys down, right? They get law enforcement or other governments to go after those other guys. And they actually have drug wars. I mean, like, they, you want to end the drug war? Make pot legal. Done. This is why. And so they get you Christians and the other silly people to try and, you know, oh, the marijuana is evil. It's cannabis, first off. Second off, cures cancer. You have so many medicinal properties, I don't have time to list them all. You can watch other videos. Um, and then the hemp is a completely different issue. Hemp being an industrial product that has so many uses that we can't even, I mean, from building materials to food to, to it just goes on and on. Plastics, fuel. Okay, anybody that might have uh, patents or ideas or being able to, one, they can crush that by keeping it illegal. Two, they can crush that by uh, making sure that they can get dirt on those guys. Make sure, right? It's about control, right? Anybody that would like make some progress with the congressman or something, oh, then they pull the congressman out. Get it? Federal judges, there are judges that might rule in favor one way or the other, and set some precedent. Ooh, got dirt on those guys. It's about, you have complete state capture. Who funds all this? How is this all funded? Right? Our government's broke. Our government's bankrupt. Who funds all this? Right? They have no tax base to cover the billions of dollars that we spend just on surveillance, much less the military, trillions there. Who funds all this? Right? The central bankers via our Federal Reserve. It comes back to the Fed every damn time. People say, oh, the NSA are in control. The NSA in control? That's, that's like saying my hand is in control. <laughs> my hand is not in control. Okay, the NSA, like an army or a navy, is just an apparatus set up by the bankers. When you ultimately get back down to it, if you go behind, look behind the damn curtain. It's not the men in the NSA. I think those guys, those guys come and go. Those guys, are, and they're also expendable. Same thing with the CIA. Same thing with anybody in the military. You, everybody that signs up knows for a fact that you may have to give your life for the greater mission. Anybody that's been in the military understands this concept. They don't like it either, but I mean, that's the way it works. Well, same thing, right? So the bankers are the ones in control. They print, they're the only ones that could print billions and billions and billions and trillions of dollars to fund all this shit. Wake the fuck up, right? So they're going to try and keep the, your eye on the ball when it comes to Snowden. Oh, look at Snowden, shoot the messenger. Or try to prism or, you know, all these, right? Huh? Look at the bigger picture. Who is funding all this and for what purpose? You need to wake up. It's just ridiculous. Now, little guys like you and me, there's only 300 million of us, right? There's billions on the planet and billions on the planet are waking up. Look what happened in Brazil, right? <laughs> Over, right? Rather, so oddly enough, they'd rather have schools and social spending than a freaking stadium for the Olympics or whatever, not the Olympics, the, uh, the uh, World Cup. Soccer. They take, and these are guys that take their soccer more seriously than we ever could take football or basketball. These guys are crazy about their soccer. And still, they'd rather have in the streets, in the millions. And somehow they managed to try and gloss over this in the, in the American press. Why were those guys protesting? Okay, in the United States, we, they have perhaps woken something that they weren't aware that they were going to wake up. Because this whole Snowden thing, man, it's got... Listen to some of these interviews, and I am... Uh, uh, it's interesting to me that Snowden would be the one that would crack the ice and make it through into the uh, discourse because there have been so many uh, credible whistleblowers that have not. And uh, suddenly Snowden is all, and but again, he's always in Russia. Oh, he's in, oh, look, oh, it's in, right, where's Waldo? Instead of focusing on the, the, the main thing, striking at the root. Even those guys, do you want to focus on prism and all the spine? Like, why the spine? Who does it? Where did it keep going? back? And it comes back to the central bankers. Every damn time. The concept of state capture. They have captured our governments. Those of you that understand, they have set up this system, right? Those of you that want to go down the sovereign road. You ain't got no government. I mean, if, you, if you really are a U.S. citizen, U.S. person, does not describe people that are awake. Right? If you were born in one of the sovereign states. Anyway, that's a whole nother thing. But that's, a, as they like to say, but the idea that, oh, you have nothing to fear, nothing to hide, it ain't about that. For one second, it's not about that. It's not about you and me. It's not about, you know, worrying about them coming. It's a good way to fear, to instill fear. Ooh, they might be watching. No, we could be watching. The government could be listening. The government's watching this video right now. 
Right? Oh, the government knows you're watching a guy like this. I wonder if you agree with him. Oh, if you hit like, right? You might be a radical. You can be a terrorist. No, how about just somebody that wants a voluntarism? Somebody that understands that we need fully informed juries, that we need government that is of and for us, not them. Because right? the government's supposed to be us, but that's not how it's worked out, has it? And that whole centralized power base of the Fed, right? The anti federalists turned out they were correct. Now we've got this federal government that's completely out of control. We've got this banking system that's out of control, and it's gonna crash. Now, when this whole thing crashes, they're going to offer you a new system. They're going to fix it. There's going to be a huge crisis and people are going to be crying. There will be pain, trust me. And they're going to offer you a new system, which is worse, which is even more control. And there needs to be voices that say no. There needs to be voices that say, here's a better way to do it. Here's this thing called voluntarism. Here's this thing called sound money. Here's this thing, right? Representative government. Actually, counting the votes on paper so that you can't rig them through your computer programs that are so simple to rig, it's ridiculous. Right here in Hawaii, where you get your paper ballot, but then you feed it into the machine. Right? You don't vote on a machine, you, you, you get your paper ballot and, and feed it in. And anyway, and people can't understand how easy those are to hack. They're easy hack 100s. Getting our government back, paper ballots, making sure that people, that they're, you know, the, the vote is solid and sacred and actually you vote in private, but you're sure your vote got counted. Right? There, are, there are people that try to do that, they die or they get, they get rid of those guys too. Right? But understanding the fact that we can fix the solution, that we can fix the problems, we have the solutions. You and I are the solution. The government is not the solution. Therefore, you keep the government off and let us do what we have to do to fix the problems. As limited as possible. This is what the Constitution was about. And I have friends that are saying, oh, that Constitution is outdated. That's the best document we've got and many other, the envy of the planet. And yes, we could sit down and write better, but we'd be a lot of squabbling. And right now with the corporate interests and the way the PACs and the money goes through, probably not the best time to do that. Because they'd write it in such fashion that it, it benefits the bankers and it benefits the corporations instead of benefiting we, the people. Right? And the idea is we need to understand and educate, educate self first and then educate others. Voluntarism works. People helping people work. People are good. Right? I have friends with them. People are bad. That's why we need the government. So who makes up the government? The bad people? Or only the good people? Once, once these bad people that you're so worried about and so afraid of and so, you know, that need to be controlled and so forth, once you give them some pepper spray and a badge, suddenly they become good? And suddenly they're trusted? And it's just ridiculous logic. Voluntarism works. You restrain the powers that be. We don't need a military police force on the streets going house to house protecting us. Right? Protecting us from what? From the, from the freaking threat that they created? And so now we have the whole, and go, yeah, go back to 911, the whole the genesis of all of this, Patriot Act, NDNA, you know, Resource Protection Act, all of that comes back to terrorism that they created, that you need to be protected, that we need to spy on you for your own good. What a crock of bullshit. We have altruistic reasons. We have noble intents. Take your noble intents and, you know what I mean? Pretty simple. There, isn't, there is no excuse for what's going on. It's un-American. It's unconstitutional. You have no... Those of you that defend it, man... It's just ridiculous. Because there is no defense for this. There is no defense for what they're doing. And what you're hearing from Snowden isn't even... The, you gotta take a look further at what these other uh, whistleblowers have been saying. Because Snowden, like I said, it's, it's, uh, it's an interesting phenomenon. But we need to be careful when you, uh, whether it's a whistleblower or not. But I mean, Bradley Manning, oh, there's a lot of people, right? Telling the truth in the age of, in the empire of lies is treason. It should, it should thoroughly scare you that guys that blow the whistle and tell you, oh, the government's spying on you, have to leave the country, have to fear for their lives. This should be of concern. Anyhow, like I said, I'm going too long. But, and, but better than 35, made 35 minute videos and 38 minute videos and 27 minute videos. It's hard to make these videos. Down below, there are crap loads of links. I will try to put asterisks or start, but you know, call attention to the ones that I think are better than others, but all of them should be digested. 
Issues like this, it's not five minute sound bites. It takes hours and hours to go through all the different things that come. But the bottom line is, it's not about nothing to hide. It's not about you and me. It's about absolute capture of the government and your the way that you are governed and the way that you know, the state has been captured. And even if it was, you know, the magnificent, beneficent state that is, you know, that was the idealistic Americans have in mind that, you know, is around the world doing good and spreading, you know, freedom and liberty to all, even if it was that, which it's pretty clear it's not, it's been captured <laughs> so that those, so that those guns are used for the bankers ends, so that the laws are written now for the bankers, not for the people, so that the laws protect the monopolies, so that the laws, right, so that they can use and, and, and use the term lawful to do atrocious things. Right. More, more, lots of people, I have friends that are descendants of Germans, uh, will tell you that what the Germans, everything they did was lawful. It might, Martin Luther King mentioned that, many people, right? Everything our government will do that is absolutely immoral, evil, and wrong, they can cloak under the term lawful, under color of law. Now, educate others. Right? Use these links. Educate yourself. Understand sound money. Being able to sound my understanding that it's the Fed comes back to the money printing, comes back to the way we finance all this, comes back to the corporate control of the bankers. And again, I'm not talking about cor you know corporations are evil. iPods, my computer, people that make no, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the, the corporations that energy and food and money, those corporations. God, and why do I even have to explain that? Anyway. The idea is you understand sound money, you understand how money works and central banking, you understand fully informed juries, you understand that the ballot and the, and the vote needs to be secured and that it's not. You have to understand right, that, that more people got to get involved in this whole thing called self-governance because there are plenty of people that are happy to govern for you. Happy to. So. And the fact that we have so many people, 300 million, Obama and Romney were the best we could do. In fact, you could probably say that in most cases in the Congress, that these are the best we can do. 300 million of us from every part of the planet. This is what make e pluribus unum. From everywhere now, from Asia, from Africa, from Europe, from name it, north and south of our borders, Mexicans and Canadians, all of us in the United States, we are the solution. Government must be restrained to allow us to affect solutions that are appropriate for our local areas, right? What works here in Hawaii may, might not be the best solution in Maine. Why is that even, right? So having this one government, one size, one law fits all is ridiculous. Voluntarism. That's it for me for now. Read the links. E pluribus unum. See you soon.